Oh, good. I'm finally happy. I'm finally happy. Not that I haven't been content this morning, but my contentment is now just brimming with happiness because she's here. Ah, Ann Coulter joins us on the left coast. Ann, how you doing? Thanks for being with us. Oh, my gosh. I am so happy to finally talk to you. My phone is working. I'm not at the convention. Hi, Brian. (laughs) Oh, so great to have you. I mean, listen, you're always way ahead of the curve on everything going down. I just want to get your take on, first of all, (laughs) this chaos at the DNC. Oh, my gosh. This is fun. It's unbelievable. And I, I, I these Bernie supporters... They hate Hillary more than, you know, the most angry right wingers. <laughs> They're all we- wearing the Hillary for prison T-shirt. Before he gave his convention speech last night, which you could hear a little bit of the crowd's reaction, he gave a rally. Um, and I was watching it live. I've, the, the media has not been anxious to, to repeat it. Um, but, what, of course, it's reasonably well known that when he said, and that's why we have to vote for for, for Clinton came, the crowd booed. But what was striking in the rally speech, really striking in the rally speech, and a little bit striking last night, is that when he then pivoted to attacks on Trump, the crowd was not buying it. They really, they don't hate Trump. And moreover, if you look out across the convention hall and listen to them talk, one of the things they hate most about Hillary is her support for that job-killing trade deal, deal the TPP. They have big mm-hmm. signs with, you know, the, the international no sign for TPP. Um, one of the delegates interviewed, Sanders delegates interviewed by MSNBC, MSNBC interviewed Three Sanders delegates after Bernie Sanders' speech saying, we have to support Hillary, this is our movement, we got changes in the platform. All three Bernie delegates (laughs) said, no way, I'm not voting for Hillary. (laughs) Wow. 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 Okay, so, Ann, this, I I have met many uh, Hillary, I mean, excuse me, many a Bernie supporter, and they are hashtag never Hillary. The mainstream media won't quite grasp this, even though, you know, yesterday you talk about these delegates who say, no way. I don't see how this is going to work out well for Hillary at all at the end of the day. And that's why I say big advantage Trump. But what about you? I think so. I mean, my prediction all along had been the the working class supporters of Bernie's. And there are some, um, Mm -hmm. especially, you know, opposed to the job killing trade deals and having um, low-wage immigrants jump, dumped on the country, driving wages down, and taxing the hedge fund um, bill. I mean, taxing them at the same rate I pay. This isn't some, you know, you know, right. I hate the rich thing. They, they're, they're, for years, hedge fund operators have had this utterly unfair tax loophole. And I don't care that they pay a lot of money. It's simply not fair. And that is Trump's argument. He's the only presidential candidate ever to raise this because both Republicans and the Democrats need the money from the hedge fund operators. So anyway, I always thought um, working class uh, Bernie supporters, they're going to Trump. That's, I mean, in fact, there was an article in an op-ed in the New York Times um, this weekend saying that, a woman talking about her uncle, he's, you know, a farmer and, and worked for, I don't know, I forget what it was, like machine operator or manufacturers or something, and said he's, it, it's, it's number one choice is Sanders, number two choice is Trump, and no one else. Um, I thought the, the social justice warriors, the millennials, they just want the free college tuition and they haven't taken Econ 101 yet. <laughs> but that was the weird thing last night. The three Bernie delegates interviewed right. by MSNBC were all young women. And yeah. they were absolutely no, wow. never Hillary. Moreover, the things they talk about, I mean, other than, than – and I always liked that idea of Trump debating – Bernie, because because I mean, at least on a lot of the things Bernie says, that's mm-hmm. what Trump is actually going to do. That is to say, Col- I mean, not the crazy stuff that that would get you an, an F from Econ 101, but to care about the working class, to care about the American workers and getting their wages up. And you know, in the abstract, no, we can't all have the same income. Um, you can have a right. productive economy, or you can have an absolutely equal economy. That was the Soviet Union. But but the income inequality, at the risk of sounding like a Bernie Sanders delegate, it really has gotten out of control in the last few decades. We've we've just carved out, emptied out the country of any manufacturing. 
um, that that's great for the bankers because they get to arrange these big trade deals and sit on international commissions and they get richer and richer and richer. And I just think the people on the coast are just so disconnected from what's going on out in the country where wages have been absolutely flat for decades now or going down. Right. And Coulter.com, by the way, is her website. And do you think that Team Hillary, the Democrats, had something on Sanders whereby he was really forced to endorse Hillary? Because I remember, you know, last week when when uh, they had that joint presser and he's there to talk about Hillary, he was, I mean, he was sweating profusely. I'm thinking, my gosh, it's like they've got a gun to this guy's head. What kind of dirt do they have on him? Why, why did he have to go down this road and do this? Well, it seems amazing to Republicans, but I think I think um, the one holding the gun on Democrats is the media, the utterly corrupt media. I mean, with these WikiLeaks emails coming out from oh, yeah. uh, the DNC, we, we can see that um, the, basically the entire media is just a subsidiary of the DNC. I mean, it's hilarious for someone like me who does TV to, to see, I mean, this is, seems like a small thing, but just the emails going back and forth between DNC, either Debbie Wasserman her, Schultz herself or her underlings, where the producers are laughing about GOP nonsense and asking, what do you want to talk about? I promise you, no, no TV producer has ever asked me what I want to talk about. <laughs> I mean, you can <laughs> see it the, the casual viewer can see it if you ever watch the news programs and hit the mute button whenever a democrat comes on the set oh everybody's all smiles it's like a party um we're so happy and when a republican comes on it's like they've just bitten into a lemon and they're very <laughs> angry you can just tell by the body but whoa the emails give it away and that's that's why no democrat can ever do a ted cruz not that a re- that a republican can do a dead cruz either mm-hmm. i think you committed suicide um right but but why the media would just be so relentless and nasty and sneering about sanders they already were a little bit last night rachel maddow on msnbc was just hysterical about the three um bernie delegates who said <laughs> they're not voting for hillary <laughs> okay now you brought up ted cruz so we've got to address those listeners who are in the never trump crowd i mean they believe in ted i don't know maybe they'll write in ted but what do you say to those folks who are so stubborn, there's no way they're going to vote for Donald? Um, well, for one thing, pre-order my book, In Trump We Trust, E Pluribus Awesome, out August 23rd. Um, okay, thank you. It's addressed to a lot, both people who already support Trump and those um, wondering what's happening and those who, who are still not comfortable with him. Um, I, I, I think I think we, other than the ones who live in Washington D.C., and this is an existential election for them because Trump has shown how useless political consultants, pollsters, all this money, 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 and these, you know, the consultants and the think tank people—they have kids in college. They don't care about the country. They care about their salaries and their jobs and their ways of life. Um, but other than those, and unfortunately, those are all the ones you see on TV. I think for the few remaining. Cruz cultists, and and they are a little cult-like, um, because I th- I think for all of us, I, I call it you know the seven stages of of, of grief with Ted Cruz. Um, we all <laughs> his, his epitaph should say he had a lot of potential, because we all loved him at some point, you know Princeton right. and Harvard Law, and he seemed so principled. And then I, I've taught you know various of my friends. It was different moments at which we realized. Oh, my gosh, he's just a lying opportunist. Um, and it comes at different points. But right. I, even the ones in that, in that convention hall, I wasn't, I wasn't there last night. I just wanted to go to the convention to party and celebrate my, my victory of Trump being the nominee, um, <laughs> following to the letter, adios America. Um, right. <laughs> so I was out at dinner with friends, and somebody came running out and said Ted Cruz was just booed off the stage. Um, So we all looked it up on our iPhones. But the next day I talked to a lot of delegates who were in the hall, and whether they were in Texas or Colorado, Mm -hmm. Alabama, but states that went for Ted Cruz, they said 
People were so angry. They were screaming so loud, say mm-hmm. his name, booing Cruz, that you could not hear yourself think. You couldn't, it, they said it was explosive. So even some of the ones, the delegates who were Cruz delegates and were there to the bitter end, that refusal to endorse our nominee, having taken the pledge, I mean, it really is swine-like of all of these Republicans. They forced Trump, Trump to take the pledge, and then all of them just casually walk away right. from it. What? Why? Because he'll enforce immigration law and their principled position is they won't because that's not who we are. AnnCoulter.com. By the way, the new book. So it comes out what day in August? August 23rd. Okay. We're, and the title of the book is? In Trump We Trust. I can't wait. We'll we'll get a link up at ksvo.com so people can pre-order this. It's one of it's it's truly our favorite guest. We don't and we don't have many guests, but anytime you want to come on, you know it's an open invitation because you're always great. Excellent. Well, now that I'm done with the book, I'll be pestering Cherry all the time. Perfect. That's great. <laughs> AnnCoulter.com. We'll get her all linked up at ksvo.com. And thank you for your wonderful words of wisdom. We look forward to having you back on soon. Thank you. Bye, Brian. Excellent. I just, I mean, I love her. I'm just, I'm just telling you, I, I love that woman. And Katie, that's one of the, I, okay, I love Sherry. I love Katie. I love Ann. The three ladies I can say I love, my wife has no problem with it. There you go. Good. I don't want your wife coming after me, you know? No, you do not want that. <laughs>